Oh man, we are so close to the end game, but our theory for chapter 1014, 1114 for One Piece, um, the snail is inside the robot, so I had that part correct, and I wanted to still estimate that the moment that we saw Vegapunk is exactly when he was throwing the snail inside because he was partially halfway through, so I think that we are correct there, and that was the moment when he put the snail inside the giant, uh, the, the iron giant, basically. Um, but, man, that last panel with Rayleigh is just so powerful. Stop, he's saying stop, Vegapunk. Um, this is, this is too much, you're saying too much. It's their thrill. Let them find out. So what do they know? Vegapunk knows so much about uh, the Void Sentry talking and talking and talking. And then you see other people in other panels. Such a good chapter. I just, I want it so bad that I want a, a, a chapter that just looks like a novel. Just give me the details. Give me everything you know. It's, it's so slow. But we jump into the chapter here uh, for Emu. We see a portrait that looks like Vivi, and I'm just thinking, okay, so the, some people's theories are cor are looking correct, not correct yet, but they're looking correct. Of uh, something happened, and he he probably lost an opportunity. Maybe he he loved this person. We don't know yet, but we cut to Emu. <laughs> In the same um, voices of people were saying, and in, in like speech bubbles of, of them saying, who's still alive from 850 years ago, Void Sentry time. And then we have Emu walking through this field of flowers again. And that's who's probably still alive. That's how we know that Law's Devil Fruit can keep somebody immortal. So it's probably been used to through all the Gorosei. Anyway, that's... Um, that's, we'll, we'll, we'll see how they're still alive to this day. We cut to multiple people around the world still. And Vegapunk is monologuing, monologuing. I love it. Just tell me everything you know. Please, please, just keep talking. And we cut to Stussy talking to Edison. And we get this, this feeling that Stussy did truly care. And it was in such a terrible conundrum. Choosing between Vegapunk's and well no she didn't really choose she was always 100% loyal to Vegapunk but it still hurt that she had to betray her her crew of of uh, Cypherpool which proves that she has a will of her own she's she feels as a normal person she should do as she wishes and Edison basically gives her that opportunity to live choose your own fate and go on so I wonder what she's gonna end up doing or if she's just gonna end up staying with Cypherpool in this case but yeah, I wrote down some little notes and uh, so we can get through some certain points I wanted to go through. And I have a theory that I really wanted to explain and I'll do, do it towards the end. But it involves Joy Boy and what I said in the previous videos about sinking the world or, you know, what caused the world to, to sink. We have a panel with um, Momonosuke. So maybe Momonosuke, and he brings up uh, something about Pluton. So maybe he knows something about Pluton or what's underneath Wano. I, I forgot already what was underneath the Wano. I know it's an ancient weapon and they're not going to use it yet. Or they're not using it. But he mentions Pluton and, Mom and um, Kimono just tells him to stop talking. I don't know. Just to not give any information, I guess, about his uh, father's journal. And this is the part that sparks me right now, is we see um, Sengoku freaking out. We have Akainu boiling. So Sengoku knows something. What do these fleet admirals know? Um, Akainu knows something. He's boiling. You're going to tell them everything. Everything. Stop. You said too much. Oh man, I want to know what what do they know? How much do they know? Is it exactly the same as Vegapunk? Do, do they get a brief? Do they brief Vegapunk about this stuff? Do did Vegapunk brief them about what he knows so far? It it's just mind-boggling. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know so much, and then Kong must a hundred percent know. So 
we have all these people around the world and Vegapunk says that the former pirate crew knows exactly what what was said and what happened in that void century. Uh, and then there is no reaction. No reaction <laughs> from uh, Crocus, um, Ro uh, not Roger, um, Rayleigh. Rayleigh says, you're saying too much. Uh, just let them have fun. Let them enjoy the thrill. Let them find it. Oh, man. But that's mind-blowing. And we have uh, York break it down like, okay, she, he, he's not a good actor. He's not a good liar. He definitely was surprised. Why? How did you plan all of this while I cut my connection to the, you know, the synchronization process? And I'm thinking, well, that's where she explains, okay, I, have, I know where it is now because I'm also a, Ve uh, a Vegapunk. I don't think they're gonna fake out. I don't think they're gonna double fake out. It's definitely gonna be inside of the Iron Giant. And the theory was, well, how it got there. Not that it matters, really. Like maybe I'm correct or or something, but it's nice to be right. So it's inside the giant, Iron Giant, and it must have been when Vegapunk was partially halfway through it, and he threw it inside the the Iron Giant. And oh my God, this brings up the the. The thing, Frankie is so critical to the story now. Frankie, my boy, he stands on business. He has to, right? It would be so, such wasted potential that he would not know how to build a Pluton or he hasn't built um, the uh, a version of it. That he might have the Sunny be it or he himself is the weapon he used and programmed or something. I don't know what it is. Or he condensed it, he modified it, he did something. It would be detrimental, in my opinion, that he doesn't know how to create a Pluton to fight that other ancient weapon. When Vegapunk says there's used to be three great ancient weapons, are there other ancient weapons? Are there lesser ancient weapons? Are there more than four? Are there more than three ancient weapons? Are there four, five, six? Are there more? Are they being replicated? So I don't know, but this is why the Pluton exactly was built. There is no chance that there is no... Um, no use for it, right? Uh, I have a little note. Um, let me see. So, yeah, Vegapunk said too much. And I guess I'll jump into my theory here because I have like two minutes left. So, my theory for the chapter, not chapter, but like why Joy Boy wrote an apology letter. And I mentioned he probably used it to sink the ocean. To, to use it against the Celestial Dragon's forces. Maybe they had to recoup. Maybe the war is still ongoing because he wiped out so many people and Noah's Ark can be his ship. He either sacrificed himself, he kept everything at bay or, or something like that. And he took them out to the giant field or something in the center where there's no chance to escape. And he used the ancient weapon to submerge the entire forces of the Celestial Dragons, or world government in this case. And that's why he has an apology letter. The ship, the Noah's Ark could be his ship. It could have been used to save the people that were going to the fight. So he has a backup plan. But he probably ended up sacrificing himself in this case. Because the most obvious thing is the world government, of course, did it. The world government wiped everything out. Mm, I don't know. I... That's just a wild theory that I'm throwing out there because Oda knows you're going to assume that the world government did it. He just pulls an Uno reverse card and says, no, Joy Boy actually rose the water level by 200. And that's why Roger laughs because he explains, he probably explains the method that he used to defeat the world government. Maybe, I don't know. It's a, a crazy theory, a wild theory. It's completely out there, but... Um, yeah, that was, uh, I think that's it for me since uh, we're reaching the time limit here. But please leave me a like, comment, subscribe, and um, I'll see you for the next one. All right, so that first portion is to stay under 10 minutes. And um, this will be just to keep monologuing on those ideas um, and put it on YouTube. So it's a little longer form. Uh, the theory for Joy Boy, so... I'm trying to think of the most outlandish thing that he would do that would make Roger and the crew laugh when they read it. And it's probably one of his most ridiculous ideas on 
how to take down the world government. And that's probably why Roger wanted to meet him. It's just how he probably handled his situation and how he he might have written it before he no, that would be ridiculous, right? If he wrote it before he passed away, I guess. Maybe he did it. No, uh, of course, right. So he didn't he doesn't necessarily have to have sacrificed himself, but carrying on it is he wrote how he did it. And he himself used the weapon so he can give people more time to find a way to defeat the world government since they're going back into into not hiding but staying up there in marriage and trying to gather more resources more weapons because they lost everything on that giant flooding that maybe joy boy would have caused which makes sense now more why the noah is there he could have told everybody else hey go to the highest 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 point because i have a plan go to the highest point in around the globe really because we're theorizing that it was all one giant landmass which could have been pangea and in their world right pangea the one giant landmass and his best course of action was I need to flood the world right now or just the best way to take down their massive faction and army is to bring them out to no, bring them out anywhere really <laughs> and this is what I thought of also is they have devil fruits they're probably a curing a ton of devil fruits and this is why I'm feeling like he used the ancient weapons to flood everything is because the world government probably had the most devil fruits users and in a world full of of land what's the risk of a devil fruit is the ocean well the ocean's way way out there you're in the center of land here where devil fruits reign supreme in this case and he probably knew that, or they probably kept supplying and using this. And I had a thought of why uh, the sea would hate them in this case. Um, what was it? And I forgot. The sea would hate them because of the devil fruits. Uh, maybe that doesn't play a role. But anyway, they kept amassing devil fruits, devil fruits, devil fruits on the world government side. And the best way to take care of the devil fruits is, hey, flood them all. <laughs> Bring the water to them. And he, he would use the ancient weapon as long as he was making sure and kept funneling maybe some devil fruits. Uh, not sure how the Gorosei and Emu would have escaped or maybe Emu wouldn't have been the one fighting in this case, right? So, hmm... But yeah, that, that, then he wrote down his whole story on how he took it out on the Poneglyph, on the last Poneglyph in Rhode Island. That's my theory, at least. And uh, that's my, my talk about it. Uh, I wanted to break it down a little more, right? Because I can only say so much about the chapter in, in 10 minutes. And, you know, it interested me, actually, that Akainu and Sengoku knew so much. Like, what exactly do they know about the Void Sentry in this case? What are they briefed on? Um, or maybe Sengoku passes down the the information. Because I don't think that Gorosei would brief them. They, they probably don't know. This is probably like an internal Marine thing where Garp knows. Because, man, Roger probably told them. Um... Or, or, or maybe they are briefed on it as an internal marine secret type thing that they only the highest members know the true, true at least to their form, uh, to the extent of their knowledge, the history of what they know, which nobody else really knows. That's why uh, Akainu knows, <laughs> and he's saying you're telling them everything. Just you're saying too much. And it's funny how Rayleigh phrases it because he wants people to go and explore and learn about the world history without it being told to them. And uh, my last topic and last point is Frankie. 
Frankie plays such a vital role in this case because, man, he knows the blueprints. And I guess I explained it enough in my video for, for that. He knows how to build the, the, the Pluton. He knows, he pro and he knows what it would be used for. And it actually plays a role because he had his weapons used in a bad form too. So he's the best person to use it. So the theory, what, what, what would he have implemented the blueprint on? Would it have been the Sunny or himself? And I want to say himself because I want him to get an indirect buff in this case because I feel like Frankie is, is so cool. He's, I feel like he should be much stronger than, maybe not, right? Maybe not much stronger, but he can be much stronger and I, I do think he could be. Um, and if he gets that bl uh, Pluton buff, man, maybe he get he's gassed out for 24 hours or something, but that would be a sick buff. But in other words, in other cases, it could be um, it could be incorporated in the Sunny, right? So yeah, I mean that's that's my video. Uh, kept monologuing a little bit there. I I just like to keep talking in this case on some of these things. I just wanted to break that down. A little more if uh, if anybody gets any ideas on playing and building on those theories please let me know please leave a like comment subscribe and i'll see you for the next one